What does that even mean, Bowers Game Club? Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check it out. Ta-da! The fast-paced game of dice and spells from Cool Mini or Not. This is for two to six players, ages 14 plus. It'll take you about 10 to 15 minutes to play. And in to die, you are going to be playing as wizards trying to complete spells by rolling dice fast and frantic. But it's not that easy because each round you are going to be saddled with an unfortunate feat that you must accomplish your spell crafting with. What am I talking about? Let's open it up. I'll tell you what I think about it. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of. Ta-da! So first and foremost, we got our handy dandy rule booklet. It's one page and it's it's pretty well done. It should have you up and running in no time at all. It's a very simple game so I can also teach you how to play right now. So in Tada, what you're trying to do is you're going to be trying to be the first person to complete six spells. And everyone's going to be trying to complete spells at the same time. And only the fastest people in a round uh, to complete the spell will actually get to finish the spell and put it into their score pile. But we'll go over the components, then we'll get into the gameplay. So component-wise, each player is going to pick out a color, and they're going to get a cup, and they're also going to get six corresponding color die. And as you can see, you're going to be getting a lot of dice in this game. The dice are custom D6 dice. They look very nice. They feel very nice. And um, really, honestly, they could have used six-sided dice, and they would have just been perfectly fine because none of these symbols mean anything. But it is a nice added touch that the dice are nice looking like that. Next, you're going to have these two kinds of cards up here. You're going to have spell cards. You're going to have feat cards. We talked a little bit about the spell cards earlier. These are points, victory points for all intents and purposes. And they will have between four and six symbols on here. This just means that you are going to need to lock in dice onto this in order to win the round and complete the spell. Now, some of them will also have other text on the bottom, and these ones will let you do something special next round. So this one, select one player. Their head must touch the table at all times next round. So you're really going to be crippling somebody next round with that one. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Let's get to a couple more of them. This one. Select one player. Their hand must remain in their lap, not touching their cup until go the next round. So that one's not a huge deal. Let's see. Select one player. They must draw one spell from the spell book and complete it in addition to their spell next round. So you essentially have crippled somebody next round because they have to complete two spells. Next round, before rolling dice, you may lock one die on any symbol of your choice. That's really nice. Freezy is thy bootiest. Next turn, all players must stop rolling die when you yell freeze and can only resume when you yell go. I don't really know how that one's useful, but it is annoying and humorous. Uh, steal one completed spell from another player. My least favorite card in the game, but we'll talk more about the cards in the pros and the cons. But those are the spells you're going to be trying to complete. Next, it's not as easy as it sounds because it's not just that you can just go, hey, 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 we got all this, because you're also going to have to be completing a feat at the same time. Every single round, you're going to draw a new feat, and these will do different things. No safety net. You may only roll one die out of the cup at a time. Wow. Yeah, this one will really slow you down. Pirate, you must keep one eye covered with your hand at all times, and each time you lock a die, you must yell, yarg. Up, down, you must stand up and sit down after locking each die. That one's always funny to watch. Uh, cup slam, you must slam the cup onto the table, open side down each time you roll. Handcuffs, you must keep one wrist crossed over the other at all times. Yikes, that one's a nightmare to do. Lefty, you must keep your right arm behind your back this round. I wish they would have said uh, your dominant hand on this one, because we actually, the guy at the table who I was playing was like, oh, this works out really well because I am left-handed. Uh, so I thought that was humorous. Oh, that's actually a spell card. Karate chop, you must do a karate chop and you'll hi after locking each die. Uh, but as you can see, they are going to spice up the game, and they really kind of show you what kind of game this is. Now, the interesting thing about the feats is, if a player fails to do the feat on their turn, they are automatically eliminated from the round. So everybody else is kind of acting like a little bit of a rules lawyer, watching to make sure everybody is doing the right thing, because if they're not, you call them out, they don't win the round guarantee. So let's show you how the round is going to work. So each player is going to draw two spells. They're going to figure out which one they want to play. I actually drew two of the same spells this time. Not that it really matters because, well, I mean, this is not really that going to matter. And you are going to put it out in front of you like so. Say, hey, I'm trying to do the zipping zapple -ish. You're going to put all your dice 
into your cup, and then you're going to draw one feet and read it aloud to everyone else. So this one, uh, that one's not really not good for this scenario. Uh, here, handcuffs. You must keep one. Oh, yeah, let's go back to the other one. <laughs> you normally don't get to pick, but since I'm not playing anyone, I'm going to pick. You must keep your right arm behind your back this round. So this is my uh, my penalty that I have to do essentially this round. Everyone else is also going to have one. So you're going to say ready, set, go, and then you're going to roll out all your dice. Now here's the thing. You can only lock one die at a time. So I could roll potentially exactly what I need on the first roll, but here's the thing. You can only do it one at a time. So nothing there. Oh wait, yeah. Boom. Going fast, doing this left-handed. All right, here we go, here we go. One more, one more, one more. All the while, everybody else is doing this at the same time simultaneously. Everybody's going crazy. You're going to hear people karate chopping. You're going to hear people standing up and down doing all sorts of stuff. So I've completed it. What I do is I flip my cup upside down really quick and go, ta-da! And that symbolizes that I am done with the round. Now, the round might be might not be over yet, though, because depending on your player count, more than one person can complete a spell at a time. So, for instance, if you're in a six-player game, three people are going to be able to complete a spell each round. So what's going to happen now is if you completed your spell, you're going to take your things off. You are going to put this card into your scoring pile. You're going to discard your feet. And then you're going to rinse, wash, and repeat, drawing back up to two spells, picking out one, and then drawing a new feat. And once someone has completed six spells, they will be the winner of Tada. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Tada from Cool Mini or Not. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, the game is not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. This is a very luck-based, silly, tongue-in-cheek kind of game, which is going to be immediate turnoff to some people. There's not much strategy in this game or ways to really improve your odds of winning. It's just roll better than everybody else. And yes, there's some spells you can do, but really there's not much you can do to try and improve your luck. Also, I don't feel like the game is the best balance game, especially with the feats, but honestly, take that with a grain of salt too, because the game is over in 10-15 minutes, so it doesn't bug me so much. But just take, for instance, you know, there's one that would might make you cross your arms like this. And this is very difficult to do what you want to do, or the one that makes you hold your, uh, your spell card 12 inches above the table with dice on it. That's really difficult to do, whereas I might just have to karate chop the table, or just say, Harumph, or, or just do something else. So the feats, some are clearly going to make the game more difficult than others. But like I said, if this game were 30 minutes longer, that would really bug me. But at the length this game is, it doesn't bug me nearly as much. Another thing that I wasn't the biggest fan of was the fact that the dice mean nothing. <laughs> like, and I mentioned this in the middle part, you look at these cool dice, you're like, oh, these dice are nice and they're custom. And then when you're playing the game, you're like, eh. They don't mean anything. Like, there's nothing special about one face as opposed to another face at all. I said in the middle part, you could have used D6 dice. But I do like the fact that they are thematic dice. But still, I wish they did something. Um, there's also a spell card in here that I'm not a particularly big fan of. One, so it's not too bad, where it's just steal a, steal a spell from somebody else. Like, you just steal a victory point. And that's a huge swing in the game, if you really think about it. Because... You're essentially steal you're gonna win a card and then you're going to steal a card. So that is one third of the points you need to win the game. So that's big. I don't like that card. I would honestly probably take that card out, but with how short the game is, I don't feel like it's that big of a deal. I'm gonna keep coming back to that. With how short this game is, it really hides a lot of the small flaws the game has. Uh, one big con that I have for this game, not personally for me, but I think for a lot of people, is if you play in a situation where you can't be too terribly loud, this one is not going to be for you. This game is loud, this game is hectic, and uh, if, you, if, you know, if you have to be quiet for a wife or the husband or kids or something like that, or you play at a library or something, this is not going to be a game you're going to bust out because it will get loud very quickly. People are going to be slamming cups and yelling things and karate chopping and just all sorts of crazy stuff like this that also that's another thing if you don't like games that force you to do silly things this one might not be for you because while most of it is cosmetic to the game some of it's just kind of silly you know um if that makes sense so if like the one we have to cross arms like this it's like 
yeah, that's that's kind of silly, but it is thematic with the game. But the one that makes you like karate chop the table or yell something out loud, you're just like, why do I need to do this? This I'm just drawing attention to myself for no reason. So if you're one of those people, and this might not be for you, that's enough talking about the cons. Because honestly, let's get to the pros. Tada is great. I really like this game, and I'll put it I'll put it this simply: if you're in the market for a great family game, Tada is a no-brainer. You're gonna have a lot of fun with this game. If you're in the market for a light, quick filler game, for a game night, and you can be loud. This is a really fun game. This is the perfect kind of game somebody's like, oh, I'm going to be 20 minutes late. Boom. Look no further. Tada is definitely going to fit the bill. So what do I like? It's a pretty wide player count, two to six players, even though I did like it at the higher player counts. I like the fact that even when you have more players, it still has about the same play length. I really like the aspect that the more players you have, the more people who are going to be winning spells. I really think that was a, a great way to balance out the game and also pick up the pace of the game. And it's also fun too, especially when like one person completes that first spell in a six player game and then somebody else completes it and you're like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm so close, I just need the one die. And, and I like that an awful lot. And I also like the fact that and this is one thing that I, I was actually talking to a buddy of mine about is that when two people have completed the spells they're no longer focused on doing that they can kind of be like a rules lawyer and be like "Ooh, is he saying harump or is he shopping the table or is he does he have his hand behind his back they can kind of be like paying attention to who might not be doing the feat that they're supposed to be doing and i like that aspect of the game um i like the feats i think they're fun i like the spells i think the fun spells are uh the spells that do special things are fun, and I like the fact that you don't, you aren't stuck with trying to do those more difficult ones most of the time, because you're always going to have two spells to pick from. Now, sometimes you will get stuck with them, but uh, I like the spells, and like the artwork, components are great, the box is, uh, the box is the right size, it's not too big, it's not too small, the rules are simple to understand and simple to learn, and, and just overall, to da you know, I feel like this is one that might fly under a lot of people's radar, just because... When you think of cool mini or not, this is probably not the first thing that's going to pop in your head, but don't. If you were the market for a family game, this is absolutely fantastic, and I think your family is going to have a blast with it. And as I mentioned before, game night, late night filler, game night filler game. This is a fun one. This is a great beginning or end of the night game as well. So Sada, the fast-paced game of dice and spells, is one that I absolutely can recommend you check out. Uh, it's fun to play, and it's also really fun to watch, too, which is... I don't know if that's really a good thing for most people, but it, but it'll draw attention to your table. Uh, I don't know where I'm even going with that. But if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know if you could focus on one aspect of being a wizard, what would it be? For me personally, I'd love to make potions that do all sorts of crazy cool stuff and just have like this huge row of potions and just have label underneath it what they do. Turns you into a frog, turns you into a shopping cart, turns you into a uh, pen, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I do potions. What would you do? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.